Ministries is a, a ministry or an, an organization that intervenes in the plights of widows and orphans and any other disadvantaged person in our society. And um, I, as a believer, as a Christian, I, I got this when God talked to me about uh, intervening or availing myself to help the widows and orphans. And it was way back in 1985. Oh, Still, uh, the Lord talked to me and I found it very difficult to accept because during that time there were, there were no issues of widows and orphans as it is now. So I really did it early. I took my time, I was like, I'm not suitable. I, I was arguing with God, telling them, I'm not suitable, I don't think I'm the one who's doing this because I was not an orphan, neither was I a widow. So I found it very difficult to work with the people that I really didn't know how to help. It took nine years before I really said, okay, God, I think now I'm ready for it. Though I was not really very ready, but I decided to say, okay, let me listen and take it up. So in 1995, I decided to register Springs as a legal entity with the Ministry of Culture and Social Services. Then, this time the name has changed. So we registered it as a community-based organization. During those years that I, I said that I was bargaining with God, I asked him, if you want me to do this, then give me a name. So at first I thought, why don't I name it Oasis? Because it came to me knowing that the widows and orphans are like people whose lives are like a desert, that are drained. All the hope is gone. All the hope they have is gone. It's like it's a, a, a desert place. The life of a widow, the life of an orphan. So I was like, what can bring hope? Then I remembered Oasis in the desert. Then I said, then I, uh, no, I, I realized Oasis is common. Then I said, what about a well? I, I would look at some of the wells in my village. <laughs> then I realized wells dry. Then they become muddy. Then I said, this is not lasting. So I said, God, give me a name. And one day as I was just reading the Bible, I came across Isaiah chapter 35 verse 7, which says, the burning sun shall become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs, in the hounds where jackals once lay, grass, reeds, and papyrus will grow. Then I said, this is it. I said, I think I want to start it springs. And because we had started identifying with some widows, we started banding them in groups either church groups or community groups. So these widows, we, we started dealing with leaders. We chose leaders, leaders of different groups. We called them together and we made them to be our community focal points, like community workers. Now they are the people who would identify those very needy people and let us know in the office. When we want to bury one of the widows, uh, one widow died and we went to bury them. Then 
one of the children asked me, Auntie Margaret, where are you taking us after this? And that just just made me start thinking otherwise about the orphans. It found when one of the widows had donated land to us. And so we have an orphanage, which is 15 years now. Yeah, an orphanage that uh, we, we take children from 7 to 12 years, then we walk with them up to class 8. After class 8, we integrate them back to the community because we do not want to keep them People will take the properties maybe they had at home. So we make sure occasionally they go back home to check on whatever their parents left. So after class eight is when they leave the orphanage so that we take others. So we maintain the number of about 50. After class eight they go, we replace them like that for these 15 years. The first partners we have are widows and orphans because they have groups in various communities, in various churches, they are our first partners because they are the people who make us know who to support and who, I mean identify the people we support. Then the schools where our children go to, we partner with the, with the school so we make them know these are our orphans we are supporting so help us help them. Sometimes they are, they've been traumatized, they are not able to do well in school. So we make the teachers understand that this is the situation of this child. So we partner with, with schools. Mm -hmm. Then we also partner with the government. Some of them are, pri are also private clinics. When we want our children to be taken to the hospitals, either we take them to the government hospital or we identify a private clinic that can be patient with us. That when we don't have money, they can still treat the child and we, we pay later. Then we also partner with the children's department. Because the children we have, we cannot live with them without the, the support of the children's department. Every child must be taken to court and officially given to us by the court. So we do that in liaison with the children's department. Then we also partner with different churches some of the churches that uh, have such a calling can always come and visit the children for the sake of the spiritual aspect of it. When you see me, it is a call. You pray a lot, you beg a lot, <laughs> and you work very hard. So resources is like, um, occasionally you'll find well-wishers coming in to help. But it is very difficult to plan with well wishes because you never know when they'll wish you well. So I saw that I could not depend so much on people because it wasn't really forthcoming. So we decided to, to start an empowerment center where we were empowering young girls. We were training, training young girls in difficult circumstances. Maybe some of them had dropped out of school or some of them had become teenage mothers. Because when parents die, you find an orphan girl will always be taken to go and serve as a household or stops going to school to take care of the other siblings. So we said, no way, we just need to start up something with them where we train them to do skills. Tailoring, dressmaking, and other making of artifacts. So as they started making these things, we realized we are able to sell them. As we were training them, they were actually producing there's a lot of production going on. said, why don't we start off now selling them? So the Empowerment Center is now having the production unit. We are doing a lot of African artifacts, a lot of African jewelry. We are also doing high school uniforms. So we have a way of, we are getting the money, but you see these things don't go, they are seasons. So the well-wishers still come in. Occasionally, some people would come I don't know whether to call them well-wishers or donors, but they are both well-wishers and donors at the same time. They can come and say, okay, I want to pay fees for either one in high school, or I want to pay fees for your children. Or they say, for one year, I want to commit to be supporting your children, sending some little money to buy them food and upkeep. So this is how we have been going on. People come in for one, two years, three, then they go, because that is their level of commitment. 
the groups that we have in the communities have got different activities depending on the locality. So not all groups of widows are doing the same thing. So we leave them to choose what they can do which is favoring them within their community. So with them they have their they, but they, it's like every group, all of them are doing table banking. Then you find some are doing agriculture, things like good rearing, some of them have got daily animals, delicate ones that they keep. Some of them are doing uh, horticulture, a lot of vegetable planting, assorted uh, uh, traditional vegetables that people eat these days. Then uh, some of them, the time they were nursing their husbands, they stopped everything they were doing. So when the man dies, when the man dies, he dies with all the resources. And it makes some of these women become so disoriented. But as they sober up, they cool and they start, they start making them try to think about what you need. We want you to reawaken that skill. And we have found so many of them have uh, started coming back to what they ever did. And now they are doing them to help them raise funds to support their children. So we try, we are trying to restore hope that had been lost for self-reliance. Then uh, with orphans, as I said, we had started an empowerment center. We have started bringing in boys that we are also training. But some of them we take to vocational training, especially boys. So we can agree with some people who have uh, an artisan place. I mean, show where they develop skills like uh, welding, carpentry. So we, we ask them to allow us to put our boys there. So some of our boys have also done those. So those are some of the partners that we have, those individuals that are saying, give me two orphans, I would want to train. So we look at those that have not been privileged to go to high schools, and we don't leave them like that, we make sure we train them. So then with uh, the girls, we do a lot of dressmaking, and a lot of artifacts. So we sell those things, as some of the activities that we do, to help us raise money. But we also run seminars and workshops, we do capacity building for the leaders of these groups and even for leaders of the farms themselves. But we continue meeting them in the villages where they are. We can have maybe four groups meeting at the same time and we train them. So there is much more of capacity building now. I'm talking about how they can raise support for themselves to be self reliant and how to be economically viable in this coming, in this age where we are, where things seem to be very difficult. So 20 years, we must now start behaving 20 years. Uh, we have realized that the influx of widows and orphans is a real thing. And uh, in our survey, we discovered Bondo Sub County or Sierra County, there are not so many orphanages. And where we are located now, it's within uh, just a suburb of the city. There are so many orphanages or children institutions around. So we felt 20 years we need to get out, out of the city. And we discovered Bondo Sub County is not having any they don't have many children or institutions or orphanages, they're just not there. So we want to, the way forward is to go and create another orphanage in Bondo with uh, added uh, activities. So we want to go and create and start something we call a citadel, where the widows can get a place of refuge, the orphans can have a place of refuge, and the type of orphanage we are going to have there is not what we have currently. Because many orphans do not know how to live in a family setup. The moment both parents die, they are distributed. And now we want to go and start developing a house unit, you know, 
where they kind of have a family and a house parent. Then we will have to start a school for them, that is a part of the citadel. Because we realized many orphans don't start school early. When parents die, there's a lot of disturbance. Either they drop out of school or they go and they don't go regularly. So you find the foundation is not there. So we said we want to go and start with the younger children and we grow with them, start a school for them. So we give them the real foundation that is needed. At the same time, we expect the young widows to do a lot of different activities. We give them a plot of land. They can do a lot of farming, different types of farming within that land. So that is the way forward now we want to take it to another level so that they feel they are in an environment where they are loved, they are cared for. Uh, and also crop growing. We, want to, we don't have uh, a crop growing area, so we keep on buying food. So we'd like to have a whole some acres where we can plant our own food, and grow our own food so that we don't spend a lot of money buying food. <laughs> We have gone a long way, we are, we are 20 years now. So we want to celebrate and say, this far we have come, and this much we have done. So we are celebrating 20 years of our existence, and celebrating that which we have managed to do and achieve. We realize that Bondo Sub County has got no institutions for children. Even rescue centers for girls are not there. We have decided to take celebration to work so that we, we create awareness of what we are doing and what we want to do. So because we are, we are getting in there, so we are telling them, here we are, we are coming or we have come. But this is how we have been. And this, this is the number of years we have been in existence. So we are taking it to Bondo to introduce ourselves to them, to introduce our work and our organization to them, and to make them know that we are we are actually coming into your land. It's gonna be a great day. Mbali tu me toka, na mahali tu me fika. Iyo mana ni natambua, kwamba we we ni ebeneza. Siyo kwa uweso angu. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'
a very good project. Mabro Konyo to work beyond. Yes, of fact. Amen. We thank God for today. Magi Gik Maja to wet Kule Monica. So, this is the ground that we have managed to purchase. Koni Kornato, Kota Kornato, Koni Kornato, Kota Kornato, Kota Kornato, Kota Kornato, so this is where we want to put up the, the upcoming orphanage. For a teach for the tea, they come again, what a time of the new joke. So we have managed to do this. For a more one in the part of you, we have a name. Chunywa opa kiti nende ni kendo wami iduo kiti nyasai mabe nyasai mangema kendo kigo duto mi bro timo ka mi nyingi maletuo to kamano nyasacho ni kiti nbi chenro mabe yo kita piwa chono ani inko duwa gi chenro mabe yo chenro nyasacho ama mi yo mondo wadongi to kuma hinyo wa kuru wakwa eruwa kini ebe doa ka eka wuono roho ni oti kodua Jogi mi se kelo mi wotu goma bori mi wotu makare wagoni ero kamani. Kuro wotu akendo nya sachwa cha kodwa program ni kendi biki e kodwa enyingi ya sokristo. Amen. Wewe hapana